Good yeah, morning, New Canaan, Canaan High, School. High School. I'm Sydney Sevilla. And I'm Chase Harden, coming, coming to you live from, from the, the NCTV NCTV studio. studio. Today is a day G. It's Friday, October 14th. Thanks for joining us this morning. It's been such a fun spirit week so far, and there's more coming. We have tons of news to cover today, from homecoming preview, the fall play, and the recap of Spirit Week. But before all that, please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to, to the, the flag of the United, United States, States of America, of America and, and to the, the republic, republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. As you all know, today is the final day of Spirit Week. We're finishing the week off strong by showing off our school spirit in red and black. Each day, we had fun selections of costumes and outfits, and there was a ton of participation from each grade. We have made a special video showcasing all of your amazing outfits, so stay till the end to see it. To end the week off even stronger than the beginning, we've got the pep rally today to get everybody ready for the big homecoming game. Let's check out the schedule to make sure everybody knows where to go today. With the first two blocks shortened, we have the pep rally from 1032 to 1112, in the gym, the rest of the day will be going on as usual, so make sure to get to class on time once the pep rally is over. Since that's just during school, let's hand it over to news reporter Charlotte Moore with the latest details on the rest of the weekend's events. Thanks, Chase. We've had an amazing spirit week so far, and it's only going to get better. We've got the bonfire tonight at 6.30 p.m. As you can see behind me, they're setting up right now. There's going to be loads of snacks and music playing all the way until 8 p.m. On Saturday, we also had the homecoming football game from 2 to 4 p.m. against Norwalk. I better see you all wearing bright neon colors at the game. That's not all. We also have the homecoming dance from 7 p.m. to 10 p.m. Make sure to look your best and have a great time. That's all I've got today. Chase and Sydney, we'll see you guys at the pep rally. Thanks, Charlotte. It's going to be an exciting weekend, almost as exciting as taking the PSATs, huh, Sydney? Sure, Chase. As much as I don't want to be at school at 7.30 on a Saturday, I'm certainly in the same boat as all of you taking it. Registration for the PSATs is now closed. Check-in is at 7.30 a.m., and the test will begin at 8 a.m. The test is two hours and 45 minutes long. Students should bring their pencils, calculators, and a picture ID if they would like a bottle of water. Cell phones should be left at home or powered off. Cell phones are not allowed in the testing room or they will get taken away. Good luck, juniors, and remember these scores are not sent to colleges. Scores will be available from the College Board in December. The fall play, Take Her, She's Mine, is just around the corner. The performances are on the 27th, 28th, and 29th of October at 7 p.m. And if you don't know what it's about, Cindy interviewed Nicole Talamo and Lucas Orwitz about why you should all come see it. What is Take Her, She's Mine about? So, Take Her, She's Mine is about a family and where the oldest daughter goes off to college and how the rest of the family is left at home and what they do and how they deal with it. Take Her, She's Mine is about a coming of age story with Molly Michelson, who's the daughter of Frank and Ann Michelson, her parents. And it's essentially a coming of age story of the family and the daughter and her growing up. What is your favorite part about the show? Probably when Frank goes to college and sees his daughter and sees how, like, what college life is really like and see actually how much of a disconnect he has with his daughter. My favorite part about the show is being in uh, Hawthorne College for Women with uh, my roommates and then being on the elevated stage over there in our dorm room. That's really fun. Why should people come watch Take Her, She's Mine? People should come watch Take Her, She's Mine because, I mean, I think we're all in high school and all of our parents, we, a lot of us have older siblings, um, and it really highlights an aspect of all of our lives, you know? When our older siblings go off to college or for the parents in the audience about how their, daughter, how their sons and daughters go off to college. People should watch Take Her, She's Mine because it's a really fun coming of age story, especially for the seniors who are about to go off to college, so it's really relatable that way. Honestly, I cannot wait to see it. And if you want to watch Take Her, She's Mine, you can buy tickets on the NCHS Theater website at New Canaan High School Theater.com. Chase, did you know how insane prices for colleges are these days? Sydney, I do not. Well, it's like buying a new car every year. That's how much those prices are. But don't worry, we have a solution. On Thursday, October 20th, the high school will be hosting a meeting for financial aid night via Zoom. The meeting will be from 7 p.m. to 8.30 p.m. and we'll talk about how to pay for college. Anybody, anyone can attend and you can find the link on the NCHS website. If you have any additional questions, please contact Ms. Keene or the NCHS Counseling Department. Also, a reminder to all freshmen, sophomores, and juniors, 
Picture retakes and pictures for anyone who wasn't photographed are today until 2.30 p.m. in the auditorium lobby. Please bring your photo package if you are having a retake. If it is the first time, just come and they will have a photo card ready for you. A couple weeks ago, we talked about the makerspace and the changes that have been made there. This time, we hone in on the new fabrication space, which is officially ready for use. The fabrication space has everything from robotics equipment and circuitry to the beloved 3D printers. We stopped by and got a quick tour from Mr. Salvestrini, the director of digital learning. So let's roll the tape. The fabrication space is where you take the ideas and the prototypes that you created and built over here and you put them into reality. So here is a space where you can engage in 3D printing. We got 3D printers here that are either up and running or they're gonna be up and running shortly. And we know lots of students are familiar with Tinkercad and a variety, other, a, a variety of other 3D fabrication software tools. You could also use some of the circuitry that we have down here. We've got breadboards, we've got Raspberry Pi, we've got LED strips. So again, some variety of uh, circuitry that you can use here uh, to build and fabricate um, whatever you're looking to try to design. This is a big workspace, which is uh, still under construction. Um, and down here, we've got a new Cricut machine. I know many of you are familiar with Cricut and what it can do, but it can print um, objects um, on paper and on fabric. And we've already seen several students down here uh, designing using the Cricut machine. If you take a pan around this space, you'll see we've got some resources here, but there's a lot of open space where we're hoping that you will help us decide um, how best to design it, what are the tools and resources that we need here. Uh, so hopefully we'll see you in the maker space and specifically down in the fabrication space, building, uh, putting your ideas into reality. Again, this room is ready and remember you need to be certified to use it. It is easy to get certified, so stop on down and talk to Mr. Salvestrini. Well, I don't know about you, Sydney, but I cannot wait to hear about sports this week, especially since we haven't heard about it for a while. Thankfully, we have Danielle O'Malley here to let us know all about it. Danielle, what's the latest? Thanks, Chase. Our Rams have been on a roll since we last saw you guys, and I can't wait to tell you all about it. I'm Danielle O'Malley, and this is your Ram Sports Report. Girls Volleyball has been on an insane three weeks as they are now on a five-game win streak with a 9-2 record. Earlier this week, they had a game against Greenwich, one of the strongest teams in the state. The game started off strong and both teams were determined to win. They ended up having a back-and-forth five-set game where the Rams pulled out the win. Let me tell you about it. Greenwich took the first set 32-30, so the Rams knew they had to step it up. After a hard-fought second set, the Rams won 31-29. In the third set, the Rams took the W 25-20, but Greenwich came back and dominated in the fourth set, winning 25-11. But our Rams sealed the deal, taking the last set 17-15. They have a game tonight against Bridgeport Central, so let's see if they can keep it up. Field hockey has been cruising this season, sitting at a comfortable 10-2 after a win on Monday versus Fairfield Ward. In fact, most of the girls' wins have come in absolute blowouts, winning 10-0 in two games thus far. A big part of this is from sophomore goalie Ellie Rosen, who has made some clutch saves throughout the season. I spoke to Rosen about her season and filling the shoes of former star Grace Gilman. Let's hear what she had to say. Our, the best way for our team to stay positive when we do get down is just all the captains this year have been great. They've really been super supportive, super positive, super encouraging, which has been really nice. Megan, our coach, has done a great job. She is really made it so that everyone has a big say in our team and our team. Coach Megan Cunningham, Rosen, and her team look, look to continue their streak today versus Darianne. NCTV will be at today's game, and we hope to see you there. Over the last three weeks, boys cross-country freshman sensation Braden Barber ran his first varsity weight race at the Winding Trails Invitational. Barber came 20th overall out of 80 people with a 5K time of 17.57, just 30 seconds behind top sophomores Spencer Payne, Ryan Bollinger, and senior captain Ollie Gray. The boys also dominated on Tuesday when they destroyed Norwalk, St. Joe's, and Brian McMahon with a score of 17 points. They are now at 9-6 and, and sitting at 4th in the FCAC East Division. With this confidence and excitement, the boys are looking forward to the start of FCAC's next week, so good luck to them. Boys soccer continues to leave last season behind them, sitting first in their division with a record of 8-4. Since we last saw you, they have won against Danbury, Bridgeport, and Ward, but unfortunately fell short in the Rivals Cup against Darien on Wednesday 4-0. to 
Despite this, the team is still looking up as they qualify for states for the first time since 2014. But that's not all. The boys get ready for their toughest matchup yet when they take on, when they take on undefeated Trumbull tonight. Show them your support by coming to their game at Water Tower 2 at 4.30, and good luck, boys. Here's what you all have been waiting for, football. The Rams are still undefeated following their most recent blowout against Bridgeport Central, running away with the game 37 to zero. Not only this, but three Rams scored two or more touchdowns. Senior Hunter Telesco led the charge with three TDs, while junior Luke Reed and sophomore Alex Rushy each had two. With a reek of rest, the boys are prepared to host Norwalk tomorrow for our homecoming game. The game's theme is neon, so I'd better see all of you looking as close to a highlighter as possible. Now to some of the first quick hits of the fall season. Boys golf is going strong into FCAC with a 10-1-1 record and sitting first in the FCAC East Division. NCTV's Andrew Moeller caught up with Bill Brown to ask him how the season was going. Well, I think we're, we're, having, we're, we're playing well, but the problem is we're not very consistent. We're, we've got to be a little more consistent. We're, we play well one day and we don't play well the next day. So we're hoping that you know, with, the, with the end of the year coming up this week. And States and FCAC begin next week, so good luck, boys. Girls Swim and Dive sits at 5-2 and two with just two games left in the regular season, one being today versus Fairfield Ludlow. A big congratulations goes to senior captain Caitlin Maggio for being named CT Game Times Athlete of the Week recently, and good luck at your last two games in the season. Girls Cross Country has been on a tear the past three weeks, piling up a 17-0 lead. Last Saturday, the girls went to the Wickham Park Invitational with top runner freshman Eliana Savili. Savili, only being a freshman, has been in the top three every race this season, and with that, you are our Ram of the Week. This is not an easy task for anyone, especially a freshman, which is definitely something special. Congratulations, Eliana, and if you guys want to nominate a future Ram of the Week, make sure to email us at nctv78 at gmail.com. Well, I hope you guys feel caught up now after three whole missed weeks of sports, and I hope you're all excited for the football game tomorrow. That's all from me. Back to you, Sydney. Thanks, Danielle. Congratulations to all our athletes for all of your hard work so far this season. Now let's see what the weather is going to treat look like this homecoming weekend. Catherine, we hope you have some good news for us. Thanks, Sydney. You'll be happy to know I do have good news. Hello, everyone. I'm Catherine Evans here to give you this weekend's weather. We did get some rain yesterday, but today it's moving out. We are expecting low temps and mostly sunny skies at a high of 67 and a low of 50. It's supposed to get a little chilly later tonight, so make sure you bring some warm clothes to the bonfire. For game day, it's supposed to be sunny all day with temps in the high 60s. Just great football weather. So make sure you get outside and go to the homecoming game. Later that night for the dance, it's clear skies with some light winds, so be prepared for chilly weather. On Sunday, it's partly cloudy and in the mid-60s. In the evening, we should get some rain and increasing clouds with periods of showers after midnight. So expect some rain in the beginning of next week, along with cooler temps throughout the week. So Chase and Sydney, enjoy the weekend. Well, that's all for me. Have a great weekend, NCHS, and go have fun at the pep rally. Thanks, Catherine. Sounds like a perfect weather for homecoming. Before we go, we would like to wish a very happy birthday to Brian Vulcan, Annie Gilman, Tucker Milligan, and Catherine O'Shea. Now it's time for the pep rally. Don't forget to follow us on Instagram and Twitter at NCTV78 and subscribe to our YouTube channel also at NCTV78. We leave you now with Skylar Stevens interviewing you about your school spirit. Have, Have a, a great, great weekend, weekend NCHS. NCHS. I'm Skylar Stevens of Spirit Day 1. Today I'm wearing a Ranger jersey. Let's go see what everyone else is wearing. Hi, I'm here with some seniors. What are you guys seniors wearing today? Why do you What are you guys wearing? Uh, a white shirt and jeans. Got our Yankees jersey, wear sunglasses action. Wear the white and kids it. Wear all white to the back. An absolutely dashing Bechdel costume. We're rocking the Bechdel Dallas classic flop in the bag and football jersey. What's the theme here? Um, Wild West. I'm wearing my Canadian tuxedo. Wow. I'm wearing my, my light up hat. I have a little sheriff hat. Uh, an Islanders jersey. For the freshmen, what are you guys wearing today? You go first. Soccer moms versus barbecue dads. I'm a soccer mom. I'm a barbecue dad. I'm a barbecue dad. You got the mustache there? Oh, I'm a barbecue dad. I'm here with some staff. What are you guys wearing today? We're having this. Mm -hmm. My uniform, my blue shirt. I like your spirit.
What day is it? It's only Wednesday. We on Wednesdays we were Hank. Guys, what day is it? Hank day. On Wednesdays we were Hank. Why is everyone wearing pink? It's Hank day. On Wednesdays we were Hank. Let's go pink. Let's go pink. On Wednesdays we wear pink. Go pink. What day is it? Wednesday. What color do we wear? All of us have a nice jeans. Danny has shorts. shorts. Yeah. My LP uh, sweatshirt from my mom. She used to rep this back in the good old days. I got the uh, Jolly Tinker cap on. Thanks, Dad. I'm a junior and it's 70. I'm wearing my friend's dress and then a random jean jacket. Uh, I'm 10th grade. I got 60. I got boots, uh, some Luca jeans, uh, leather jacket. I'm here with my freshman buddy. What do you wear to throw back Paul? I'm wearing 50 Zero's clothing. Uh, I'm doing a New York mops look. I'm here with Mr. Deus once again. What are you wearing to throw back the claw? Today's Friday, the last day of homecoming week. I better see you guys at the pep rally wearing black and red. 